Hello, welcome to the Engineering Mechanics Tutor. Here we're going to work some problems dealing with finding the components of a vector in certain directions. So just to recap, we've reviewed a lot of trigonometry and geometry, sine and cosine, law of sines, things like that, and we've done a couple of problems where we have two vectors, which are, in this case, we're considering to, them to be forces, acting on an object, and we want to find their resultant, which means we're adding those vectors together. So that's kind of one type of problem you're very likely to see. In this problem, and also in the next problem we're going to do, we'll be going kind of a little bit backwards. Um, in other words, in the previous problems we were given two forces, and then we were asked to find the resultant, which is the sum of those forces. Here we're going to be given some information, and then we're going to be wanting to find out how those forces, what the original two forces would be needed to add together to give our resultant force. So in one case we're given two forces, we add them together and get the resultant. And in this case, we're going to be given some information where we are already given the resultant and we have to figure out what two vectors could add together to give, to give that resultant to us. Now the, the truth of it is, even though it's sort of a different type of problem, really the exact same procedure applies. You don't have to do too much additional thinking. And to illustrate that, this is a problem that we have on the board. We are given force F1 and force F2. Now force F1 is completely defined. We know it's 250 pounds and we know that it's acting with an angle of 38 degrees to the x-axis. So we know the magnitude and the direction of F1. Now we're also given the resultant. Notice this is the resultant. So we have F1 and F2 and they add together to give us F resultant here. And we're given this and we're told that it's 1,000 pounds and it lies exclusively along the x-axis. So we're given the magnitude of the resultant and since we know it lies along x, we're also really given, uh, uh, given the direction of the resultant. Right, um, And what we're trying to do is figure out what must F2 be in order to make this the case. In other words, if we have vector F1, what does F2 have to be in order to give us a result that lies completely along the x-axis and has a magnitude of 1,000 pounds? So you see it's a little bit of a different flavor. In the previous problems, we're taking two vectors, adding them together, getting the resultant. Here we're given one of the vectors and we're also given the resultant and we're asked to find the other vector. So it looks like a little bit of a different kind of problem, but as I said just a minute ago, really we're going to use the exact same techniques. So my advice to you is first, draw a parallelogram. Next, put any angles that you can get from geometry into that figure. Finally, draw a triangle and use law of sines, law of cosines to get the answers that you're seeking. So let's take it one step at a time here. What I want to do is draw a parallelogram. So I want to translate this drawing directly underneath in terms of a parallelogram. 